All right, Coach Patino, thank you for hopping on with us. Um, we'll get right into questions for Coach, but just a brief reminder, if you would like to ask Coach a question, uh, please send me a message in the chat and I will call on you. Um, and with that said, uh, we will get started as soon as the first question rolls in. Marcus Fuller, start us off, please. Coach, congrats on the win. Um, talk about just, you know, the beginning of this game, it seemed like from the very uh, start that you guys were attacking the basket, being aggressive, you know, weren't we just relying on the jump shots. Uh, was that the, the game plan coming in? We never go into a game and say, let's rely on jump shots. I'm ne I've never said that in my nine years of coaching. Hey, let's just bomb up a couple of shots. Um, we have talked a little bit about it. I said, guys, I don't know how smart I am, but if you're dead last in threes, you should not be first in attempts. Um, where I think that we really, uh, you know, changed was we turned up the heat on the ball. Um, we changed a lot of our coverages defensively. Uh, our guys trusted us uh, to be able to do it with two days prep and to just stick with it. And, you know, the story of the game was to turn over a team, an awesome offensive team 20 times. Um, and to guard our butts off for 40 minutes. So uh, very, very proud of them. Um, you know, they they keep responding. And uh, that's the toughest, you know, stretch I've ever seen. And it's not like it's going to get easier by any means. I mean, but to be able to play that many ranked opponents to go, what, five and four is great. And obviously to beat a Michigan team who you are know, blowing everybody out, ourselves included. So a uh, great response from our guys. Next, we will go to Andy Greeter for the next question. Coach, you talked about the uh, collective team defense. What do you feel about individual defense uh, with Liam on, on Hunter and, and Gabe on, on France? Well, again, collectively, I, I just, you know, I know you're asking individually, but I just thought we were more of a team defensively. We were trapping better. Uh, we were rotating out of the traps better on, on Hunter Dickinson. Uh, we were providing a little bit more help on Wagner, but I also think Gabe's we talk constantly about Gabe shooting. I think Gabe is the best perimeter defender uh, in the league. And, you know, he showed today with Wagner. I mean, Wagner's a guy who could play at the next level. He's got size on Gabe, but Gabe just stuck with it. Uh, but I just thought collectively we, we were defending as a group much better. Connor Brennan, over to you for the next one. Yeah, Coach Patino, um, as you mentioned, Michigan averages well over 80 points per game. So what was kind of the biggest um, difference between the first meeting um, and this one from a defensive perspective? Well, I thought that we did a much better job of setting our rules on the defensive end of it. You know, we were not, I kept telling our guys, guys, we look like we're playing prevent defense, you know, like in football. We're just holding back and trying not to foul. We need to be more aggressive. Um, you know, and our guys trusted it, believe in it. It starts with the ball pressure. That's the key. And um, guys really ratcheted that up, helped each other out, um, you know, scrambled instead of just kind of one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so I thought that was the biggest change by far defensively. Next, we will go to John Krasinski. Hey, Richard, uh, just wondering what you think about, you've learned about these guys from a competitive standpoint throughout this season. I mean, not long ago, you're playing against Michigan and they're really having their way with you and to be able to just respond from from that mindset of things and, uh, you know, not, you know, in, in a very short amount of time and, and play like you did today. Yeah, our response has been great after the games. Our response has got to get better during the games better. Um, you know, I, I we're not going to win every game by any means, but we shouldn't be losing uh, by the margins that we've lost in some of those games. Uh, it's just been weird. I mean, we've had so many phenomenal performances, whether it's tonight, whether it's Ohio State, Michigan State, Iowa. Um, we got to have a little bit better resolve throughout the course of the game. We've been really good after a couple of days, but we got to respond better during the game. Uh, tonight was our best time coming out of that locker room. I thought our guys were we're really, really engaged and ready to go. Daniel House, over to you. Hey, Richard, Liam hit the bench early with two fouls, and then Curry came in and brought a spark. What did you think of his minutes on both ends of the court? Phenomenal. Uh, absolutely terrific. I can't say enough about what he's doing defensively, what he's doing offensively. Totally bought into his role. Uh, totally bought into the team. He's dealt with so much adversity so many setbacks, 
and all he cares about is helping the team win. Doesn't care, never asks about playing time, never asks about his role, just as embraces, you know, being a part of winning. And, uh, you know, he, he's starting to round into shape too, where he's starting to look like a really healthy player out there. Last two questions will go to Marcus Fuller and Dave Campbell. Uh, Marcus, start us <laughs> off, please. Uh, Coach, you know, when you look at um, the way the Big Ten has been going, you know, you, you face a tough stretch like you did versus ranked teams. You see, you know, Rutgers and, and also Northwestern losing a bunch of games. What are the this confidence that you guys have had at home, um, taking that to the road? You know, how important is that just moving forward? Well, the interesting thing is there's no fans. And I'm going to say that every time you guys bring up home and road, there are no fans. There was no home court. Um, I can't believe I was looking. We've had six Saturday games. I bet you all of them would have been sold out this year. Um, we didn't have any last year at Williams Arena. But there are no fans. It's all neutral sites. I just look at over 18 games, where we've been good, where we've been bad. And we just learn from it and grow from it. Um, you know, Nebraska, obviously, is the next one up. Let's enjoy tonight. You know, who knows they're on pause. Uh, let's take a deep breath, see where that goes and keep moving. You know, the one thing about COVID is you have no idea what's what the future holds. Um, you enjoy tonight. That's it. You keep locking in on getting better. Um, I, I, there are no environments. It's not a normal year. Uh, it's not tough to play on the road because there are no fans. The challenges that you have at home are the same as they are on the road. We're, we, that, that's the bottom line. If we defend like we did today, if we disrupt like we did today, we'll be better in any venue. It doesn't matter where we play. And over to Dave Campbell for the last question for coach. Richard, just wondering what you thought about Liam's sort of mindset specifically after having to sit so long with the early fouls. And he was going to have to be pretty efficient when he came back, just how he responded from that. Well, I think he was excited about the game. You know, I mean, Dickinson did a great job at their place. I mean, you know, had 28 points, I believe. I mean, and just uh, kind of had his way with everybody. And we challenged Liam. We're like, you're a junior. He's a freshman. He's a really good freshman. But, you know, you got to act like the junior in this one. Uh, he did that. Um, I mean, obviously, it's three threes, makes some great plays down low. Uh, defensively, was really good. So, you know, we think we got a really good one there. Um, he just got to kind of, he's going through it on the fly a little bit just because he hasn't experienced it, but it's great to see him succeed. And it's great, great to see him take that next step. Coach, thank you for your time. Thank you. We'll resume in just a few moments uh, with players. Uh, just as a reminder, we will have Gabe Kalsher and Liam Robbins. Thank you. All right, so we'll be starting off with Gabe Kalsher today, uh, players. Uh, so please send me a message in the chat if you would like to ask Gabe a question. Uh, with that said, we will start off with Marcus Fuller. Congrats on the win, Gabe. Defensively, you know, it seems like in the losses you guys have had on the road in the second half mainly is when it got away from you guys. Uh, how did that come into factor today, just um, having played Michigan already? Yeah, I mean, uh, we had a great scout. Um, Coach did a great job preparing us for this game. Uh, we all connected. All five of us connected on the court. Um, we tried each other's back. Uh, we knew we had to do a lot of, uh, I guess, side ball screens with the, either a uh, fill-up guy on the backside. So we had to load and help um, help the big fellow on the backside and then scramble and to get, take away their threes. And I think we did a good job at um, disrupting um, their flow, um, getting the ball down low and getting a lot of steals. Andy Greeter, over to you. Maybe help to uh, keep Wagner scoreless in the first half. What, what's the challenge uh, defending him, giving up the size, and and how do you try to, to stop him? Uh, I just try to um, make it as tough as possible, make um, make him second guess um, his shots, um, either shortcut uh, screen that um, I know if I trail over the top, he's going to um, have a running start to go on his right hand, which he's really good at. So, I mean, I just try to make it as tough as possible for him to get to his, his right hand and 
make every shot difficult for him to um, take. Next question will come from Daniel House. Gabe, what were the biggest adjustments you guys made to handle the ball screens and the pick and rolls better this time? I think we did a good job at um, just attacking it, um, not just having uh, Marcus be the only one to attack it. Um, I feel like, uh, I mean, he does a great job coming off of it and, and making good reads, but it, 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 it just can't be him. So it has to be all um, five of us being aggressive and attacking their, uh, their denials and their, their traps as well. John Krasinski, over to you. Gabe, you may have been asked this a few times this year, but just like what what does it mean to you as a perimeter defender to have uh, a guy like Liam behind you to know that if you funnel a guy that way, that you got someone there to to erase anything that gets behind you that gets by you there? No, oh, yeah, it helps. I mean, I take part of, I take part of my defense um, a lot, so I mean, if someone does um, um, get by me, um, I'm happy to have Liam back there, uh, swan shots and walling up down there. Um, he's a great. Great teammate, he's a great defender, a great player, and it's it's really nice having a, a big presence down there to um, disrupt disrupt their, their shots. Marcus Fuller, back to you. Yeah, but you guys have heard a lot of people talk about Michigan, especially after their win versus Wisconsin. I mean, you guys a few days off. You know, what did it do to just kind of get recharged and then get excited about this second matchup? Yeah, I mean, I feel like we were. Well, it was nice to have that little little time off to, to recharge and get our minds focused on on this on this game. And uh, we came out came out strong. We came out connected through defense, and I feel like that's that's what helped us a lot is our defensive um, aggression and just knowing that um, on the road we weren't playing well on defense, not not connected, not not connected at all. But today we we definitely brought that. We just got to keep bringing that each and every game. Be um, one connected unit. The last question for Gabe will go to Andy Greer. Uh, Gabe, how did you feel like uh, um, you were thinking uh, just kind of, you know, overall as a, as a team when you guys are looking at, at kind of the, the next stretch here? Uh, how do you how do you approach this? Um, my approach is every other game. Um, I mean, coach is going to do what they do. Uh, scout scout them very well. Um, we're going to be attentive and, and uh, take in all the information. Uh, and we just got to come out like we did today, uh, connected as one unit um, on the offense and especially defensive end. And if we bring that that fight that we did tonight, I mean, I feel like it's hard for anyone to beat us. Gabe, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Wrap it up here in just a few moments, everyone, with Liam Robbins. Thank you. All right, Liam, thank you for hopping on. Uh, we will get right into questions uh, for Liam uh, as soon as the first ones start to roll in in the chat. Marcus Fuller, uh, start us off, please. Congrats on the win, Liam. Uh, talk about, you know, when you got out of the game in the first half with those two fouls, you know, when you're watching the team on the bench, you know, especially Eric continuing to push and play defense and, and control Michigan, what did that do for you? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, like, I don't want to put myself in position with those two fouls, but uh, Eric's a fantastic player. So, obviously, like, I don't want to be in foul trouble, but, you know, I have no worry. Like, you know, our team is, like, very confident with Eric in there because he's a fantastic player and he's, uh, you know, played well for a long time. So, like, he just made all the right plays and really got us a good lead to start the game. Andy, over to you. Uh, when you guys played Michigan 10 days ago, Hunter had, had 28. How much of a personal challenge did you have going up against him again? Uh, yeah, obviously, you know, he's a great player and you uh, like the goal is to, you know, make sure that their best players don't get to their spots and like they don't make the shots they normally make. Uh, so, it, you know, obviously, personally, like I didn't want him to, you know, get 28 again, obviously, but uh, it was a whole team effort. You know, we had Brandon and Isaiah coming off doubles. Uh, you know, our guards were great digging and like helping on the pick and roll. So, you know, it was a team effort to stop him and slow down the rest of the offense. Next, we'll go to John Krasinski. Liam, just from a collective, I guess, confidence standpoint, what does this say about you guys to be able to bounce back so quickly from that loss to Michigan, you know, just 10 days ago and play in a completely different style of game and really take them apart uh, in, in a lot of the kind of the ways that, you know, it didn't work out for you guys last time? Yeah, um, I think we're a very uh, mentally tough team. You know, obviously we've struggled a little bit on the road, 
our coaching staff gave us some great adjustments uh, coming into this game. And, you know, the big thing after that game in Ann Arbor was we all were saying the same thing. We weren't that team. Like, that was not the team that was going to show up the next time they saw them. And uh, we showed that tonight. Next question will come from Dave Campbell. Liam, uh, just wondering kind of what you were thinking when you had to go to the bench um, early with the two fouls and, and how you were able to come back and be uh, so efficient in the, the rest of the time you were able to be on the court? Uh, yeah, obviously, you know, I was upset with myself. Like, you know, I shouldn't have fouled on that fast break. But um, you, you just got to stay positive and, you know, be active and locked in because you never know when your number can be called. I went back a few times in the, sec uh, the first half. And then, you know, th there's two halves of basketball, so you just can't be focused on the first four minutes. You just got to keep going. Andy, back to you. How much did the scout change uh, without Eli Brooks in there for them? Uh, without Eli Brooks, I mean, the, the scout was really about the same. Like, we, we really just want to make sure we pressured them and uh, got them out of their, you know, sets because, like, when they're running their sets, like, I mean, you've seen the, you know, past games they've played, like, they're uh, undefeated. So, like, you know, we, we got pressure into them and, like, we, we did what we wanted to do the first game, basically. So I don't think much changed. We just, you know, we're really aggressive this one. And last question for Liam will go to Marcus Fuller. Uh, Liam, you know, you had three days off and then you saw Michigan dismantle Wisconsin. Everybody was talking about them to being the best team in the Big Ten. Did that really fire you guys up for this matchup? Because you've already played them, you know, you've seen them before and you know that you can play better. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, um, when they beat Wisconsin, like, you know, you're, it was just like a, like, you know, the, everyone was really high on them, but we were already plenty motivated. We didn't need to see them beat another team for us to want to go get that one. You know, we were embarrassed about what happened in Ann Arbor and uh, we were going to make sure that didn't happen on our home court. Liam, thank you for your time. Everyone else, thank you for your time as well. Uh, have a great rest of your weekend.